Mark and the Witch of the Deep Forest by Sean Arnhem, part one. Once upon a time in a certain farming village, there lived a boy named Mark. Mark's father was an adventurer, and whenever he came home, he would tell grand stories of the places he visited. Mark respected his father and retold the other children in the village his father's stories as well. For the children living in such a remote village, adventure stories were very exciting and everyone took a liking to Mark's stories. On one such occasion, Mark began such a tale. Today I want to tell you about the witch that my father met. To the north of Mark's village lies a great forest where a witch is said to dwell. His father told him that he had met this witch deep within the woods. The listening children imagined what the witch looked like and what magic she would use. They then began asking Mark questions. Mark faithfully answered each in turn, but one boy suddenly declared, Hmm, all your stories are lies. They gotta be. This boy, Ron, was known to be a bit of a bully. He would always look for faults in the stories Mark told, and Mark always got mad when the credibility of his father's adventures was disputed. There's no way my dad would lie about this. Oh yeah, then show us the witch. <laughs> Bring her here. Ron grinned. Mark angrily grabbed hold of Ron. The two began to scuffle, drawing the attention of some nearby adults who broke up the fight. Though the scrap had been settled, Mark's anger had not. That night, Mark mauled over his words and the reaction from that day, and he made up his mind. He would not stay quiet. He would show Ron. He would show that his beloved father was not a liar. He fetched the torn cloak his father had left behind, put a loaf of bread in a backpack, and rushed out of the house. I'll find the witch and bring her back. That'll show Ron who's a liar around here. Relying only on the adventurous spirit he inherited from his father, Mark ran toward the forest in the dead of the night. The shadowy forest was eerie. Every tree rustled as the wind blew. Far in the distance, the sounds of howling monsters could be heard at times. Mark trembled as he continued. As his father's story went, the witch would have a small hut somewhere deep in the forest. But no matter how much Mark explored, he saw no signs of it. He started the journey bursting with energy, but his pace slowed as he became more tired. Eventually, he found himself lost. I wonder if the witch even really exists. Mark began losing faith as he became more tired and lost. Is something wrong? Startled, Mark turned to face the sudden voice. There had been nothing there moments ago, but now there stood a black-robed girl. She appeared to be the same age as Mark, yet Mark did not know any kids from his village that looked like her. Who are you? Mark stammered. He thought it was very strange for a girl to be out here this late at night. I'm Anna. I'm a witch who lives in this forest. Part 2 The girl, Anna guided an exhausted Mark to the house where she lived. It was along a path he had followed many times while he was lost. He could not help but wonder why he hadn't been able to find the now obvious building. It's usually hidden with magic. Anna answered Mark's question matter-of-factly before serving him some nice hot soup. Mark barely heard her, however, as he restlessly looked around. A crystal ball sitting on a desk showed an image of Mark's village, the shelves were lined with books written in a language he'd never seen before. A strange liquid bubbled in a cauldron. It was all exactly as Mark's father had described in his stories. Hey, Anna, do you know my father? The witch girl nodded in response. Ten years ago, your father saved me from a monster attack. I treated him to soup as thanks, and he started going on and on about his son who had just been born. You... Mark felt it was odd that this young girl was even around ten years ago. He quickly concluded that perhaps witches simply didn't age. Thinking she might understand since it seemed she knew his story, Mark asked, to prove that his father was not a liar, if she could come with him to the village and stand before Ron. Anna shook her head and said, I have been feared and shunned for a long time. No, I do not want to be seen by people. Hearing her distant, lonely voice, 
Mark understood a little better why she lived alone. Mark decided to give up on his idea of bringing her to the village, to Anna's surprise. She had expected he would be more persistent. I won't be able to show Ron he's wrong, but at least I can see myself that Dad's story was true. As Mark said this, a huge grin spread across his face. It was clear to Anna that he was beside himself with happiness at being able to confirm his father's story with his own eyes. Seeing this, she couldn't help but smile herself. Anna gave Mark the directions to return to his village, and he promised to visit again. He started on his way, unintentionally skipping in excitement. When he arrived back at the village, he noticed that many townsfolk were walking about, even though it was still late at night. Mark went pale when he realized they were looking for him. Afraid of being found, he hid in the overgrown grass. Hey, did you find anything? One man shouted. No, not over here, another responded. Mark continued to deliberate over how he would apologize for worrying the villagers when he overheard. Where have Mark and Ron gone? Ron. Mark didn't expect to hear an additional name, so without thinking, he revealed himself. The villagers were startled, then relieved. They scolded him for having gone missing. Once they learned Mark had definitely returned alone, their worried expressions returned. What in the world happened? Mark asked. The adults exchanged glances and answered. It seems Ron also entered the forest alone. Final part. Before he knew it, Mark was running toward the forest once again. He could hear the adults trying to stop him from the distance, but he kept going. Alone in the forest, late at night, Mark knew that Ron must be just as disoriented and scared as he had been only hours prior. He didn't know why Ron had gone in, but he couldn't sit still and not look for him. Oh, I should try asking Anna. Being a witch, she would surely be able to find Ron, he thought. He began to run along the path back toward Anna's hut. Suddenly, he heard a loud cry. He headed toward the sound and found Ron and a great frightening monster. S Stop! Don't come any closer! Ron's face was pale as he waved a tree branch around in an effort to hold back the beast. The monster, clearly unfazed by it, was slowly advancing upon him. It was closing in, and Ron would be a snack in no time. Suddenly, the monster sprang forth. Mark shouted Ron's name and jumped in the way to act as a shield. He saw the monster's sharpened tusks coming at him swiftly and closed his eyes, waiting for the blow. Wham. After a sudden sound, the monster stopped moving. Everything suddenly fell silent. Mark timidly and reluctantly opened his eyes and saw. The monster, standing perfectly still with its mouth stuck open. Suddenly, its sharp tusk shattered to pieces before the boy's eyes. Confused and startled at this sudden turn of events, the monster turned around and fled into the forest at full speed. As Mark looked on, dumbfounded, he noticed the shimmer of a transparent barrier that had protected them both from the monster's wrath. My, my, what a reckless thing to do. A hoarse voice came from behind, to which Ron could only manage a pathetic eep. He turned around to find an old woman wearing a familiar black robe. The, the w witch? Ron was frozen in shock and fear. Seeing the old woman throw a subtle wink at him, Mark realized what was going on. The old woman was none other than Anna, who must have used magic to change her appearance. Anna had been heading toward the village with as witch-like of an appearance as she could, likely in an effort to grant Mark's wish. Her kindness in doing so, despite her saying she didn't want to be seen by people, made Mark happy. <laughs> From now on, be very careful in the forest. Anna left them with that eerie cackle and headed deeper in, still disguised as an old woman. Smiling, Mark silently thanked her for appearing. After a long pause, Mark asked a dazed Ron. Ron, why did you enter the forest? I had heard you went in, and if something had happened to you because I doubted your witch story, I guess I would have felt kind of guilty. 
Ron's abrupt answer masked his embarrassment. But there really was a witch? I'm sorry for calling you a liar. Ron apologized. Mark forgave him, saying he wasn't angry anymore. They put their arms around each other's shoulders and walked back to the village. When they reached it, they both received an extra tough scolding. They were each given punishments that normally would have brought them to tears. But in spite of that, the boys couldn't help but smile happily. Several days later, the children gathered in the village square. Mark was once again telling a story of one of his father's adventures. Well, today I'll tell you about the labyrinth in the east that my father found. Ron was present in the circle of children, listening excitedly to the story. While proud of his father, Mark was most grateful to Anna, the witch girl who helped him make a new friend. He planned to visit her house that weekend with the best of his father's stories as a gift. I hope she'll enjoy it, Mark thought, smiling.